Hey, this is the first in a series of really short videos in which I'll introduce you to the topic of surface modeling in Fusion 360. So in this first video, I'll talk about what surface modeling is, how you create a surface body in Fusion 360, uh, and how we can turn that surface body into a solid body. Some of that will sound weird right now, but by the end, you'll understand uh, why, why we care about any of that. In the next videos, I'll show you how to use T-splines or sculpt mode to create kind of squishy, organic types of surface bodies in Fusion 360. And again, we'll use those same techniques to turn them eventually into solid bodies that we can work with in a way that's probably more familiar to you. All along the way, I'll try and introduce how we can uh, or incorporate how we can use canvases uh, in Fusion 360 to kind of work from a drawing or a sketch or something that you've done on paper maybe or a concept drawing, something like that. So let's get into it. Uh, if you look at the way that you've been using Fusion 360, probably you've mostly been creating s solid bodies. And so that typically happens by creating a sketch and then using one of these commands, extrude, revolve, sweep, or loft. Those are kind of our four ways that we turn 2D sketches into solid bodies. Another way is to use these primitive shapes, which I recommend you don't do, but in this example, it'll be the easiest way to demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about. So I'll create cylinder, I'll choose the top work plane, just drag it out here and make it go 50 millimeters up. So I've got a cylinder. If I look in the browser on the left and open the bodies folder, I can see that it created a solid body. It looks like a solid thing here, and even the icon looks like a solid cylinder. So that's what we're used to. Uh, here's how we can create a uh, that same cylinder using surface modeling instead. So what I'll do is click up here in this tab that gives me a whole separate set of tools, uh, and it says surface. I'll eventually get to sculpt mode, which we can find here under solid, and it's this purple cube that says create form. But for now, we're just going to look at the surface tools. So um, maybe what I would do is take the same approach that I, I'm used to in the solid, uh, solid modeling world, which is to create a sketch. I'll uh, create a sketch on the top work plane, make a circle, and finish sketch. Then what I'll do is extrude it to 50 millimeters height. Now, what we're used to doing is clicking on a profile, which is this blue area that's surrounded by sketch curve. Uh, and that is what I extrude up and I'd arrive at this solid body. In this surface world, we have those same tools, extrude, re revolve, sweep, and loft, but instead you'll see they work on the actual sketch curves. So now I'm extruding the sketch curve up 50 millimeters. I'll hit OK, and when we look over here in the browser again, you'll see that original solid body that we created, but now there's also a surface body here. It looks different. It looks different over here. There's something else going on, uh, and in the icon, it looks more like a curled up piece of paper than it does a solid thing. So I'll look uh, inside this thing, and you can see that it's actually open. Uh, this is not a tube. This is not anything that we could 3D print or manufacture. This is kind of an infinitely thin skin that kind of describes a, the bounds of a volume. So if I look at it from the side, it looks like a cylinder, but uh, I can see here it doesn't have a top or a bottom. If I could get a top or bottom on there, then I could imagine this as a solid thing by kind of welding everything together or filling it with something you know those are the kind of the the analog world uh, uh the analogs of how we would do it in real life so that's kind of how we do it in here if i wanted to turn this into a solid body there are a couple ways that i might do it in this uh surface surface set of tools i could do it by using the patch command so i'll click patch click that sketch uh just this edge right here and I'll click OK. So now I've got a top on there, but there's still no bottom. So I'll do the same thing. I will choose that edge and hit OK. Uh, but what you'll see is it didn't actually create a solid body just because I capped the ends. It actually created three separate surface bodies. And so what I need to do is take one last step, which is highlight all of those surface bodies and choose Stitch. And assuming that there's not a big gap between those, which is uh, defined by this number here, that's what, that's what a big gap is defined as, uh, I hit OK and everything that's green will get welded together and become a solid body. 
So that's one way that we can create a solid body from a surface body. Now, this is the general idea. Whenever we're working in surface modeling, we're trying to arrive at a point where we can eventually convert it into a solid body. So workflows and kind of ways of thinking about modeling are different in surface modeling. Uh, so we can kind of take advantage of a different set of techniques, uh, different ways of working, especially when you see sculpt mode, you'll see that uh, you can work really organically and kind of uh, fluidly. But eventually we do want to arrive at a solid body so that we could manufacture it, we could 3D print it, we could uh, add a hole with threads, the kinds of things that we're used to doing in the solid world, we'll be able to do on a solid body eventually when we convert it. So let me take a step back and uh, go in the design history before my two patches and my stitch where I just had a surface body. Now, another way that we can we can turn this into a, uh, a, a solid body, we've, we've done one way, which is kind of intuitive, right? Like put a cap on the top and the bottom and then weld it together. Uh, another way is to, you know, again, in the analog world, just think of filling this uh, skin with concrete or plaster or something, and then you have a solid body. So we can do that here. And that technique is uh, done through this command called boundary fill. Now that requires that we again have, um, we have sort of a, a cap on the ends, everything is sort of sealed so that when we pour this imaginary material in there, it, it stays in there and becomes that solid body. So there are a couple ways that I can do that. I could use patch, so maybe I'll patch the top, that's fine. Um, also, I could use construction planes. So I could make an offset construction plane that will uh, land down here 50 millimeters below and that would be kind of, that could represent the cap on the bottom. But actually if I turn on the origin, I can see that there's already a work plane down there that um, lines up with the bottom of this cylinder. So I could use that as the bottom cap. So let's take a look. If I go to the create menu, choose boundary fill, uh, it's asking me to select the tools. So the top one is the tool, the sides are the tool. And then also if I hold down the mouse button, I can see the XZ work plane. So it's turned green because I've, I've essentially selected enough tools that I've, in, uh, I'm, I'm, I've clicked enough items that it actually describes a solid body in there. So uh, now I have to choose select cells and it actually allows me to check because there are circumstances where it might actually result in more than one potential solid body. So here it just check the only option and hit okay. You can see it's going to create a new body. And if you look, that new body is a solid body. Now it didn't remove the uh, surface body, so they're still there. If I hide that solid body, uh, I can still see inside. I can see that there are two surface bodies here. I can hide that one and hide that one, but I do have my solid body. So those are two slightly different techniques and in, in each of those I ended up with uh, a s solid body, but in this technique, just kind of going with that same workflow, I'm still left with the uh, surface bodies, but I've got my solid body in the end. So at this point, I could go back into the solid menu and um, or tools, and I could I could choose you know to add a fillet or a chamfer uh, to either or both of these, and they will work the same way. Now I'm going to show you that there's uh, maybe one last way that we can uh, convert that surface body into a solid body. It's a, a different result, but uh, let's go back again to where we just had a surface body. And uh, the other way we can do it is going to the create menu and choosing thicken. So if I uh, select a uh, face that is a on a surface body, I can just choose to thicken this uh, face and hit OK and I end up with again a solid body in this case a uh, tube rather than a solid cylinder but it is a solid body. So that's it. There, are, Those are three methods that you could use to get from a surface body or multiple surface bodies to a single solid body. Um, you'll see when we get to T-splines or sculpt mode in the next video that those techniques might be useful for again working with the uh, surface bodies that get created in, in sculpt mode and eventually turning them into solid bodies.